So I love Alpha 2, and I think Alpha 2 goes down as one of the best Street Fighter games ever. Um, and then Alpha 3 happens. And Alpha 3 is an interesting game because while being one of the most content-rich fighting games of all time, and we're gonna talk about the huge variety of versions, Alpha 3 would be like made and remade and re-added to. It was like Capcom's swan song game next to Super Turbo in many ways, where they just kept adding things to Super Turbo over time. That's kind of like the same case for Alpha 3 to an extent. So Alpha 3 comes out, greatly expands the roster once again, uh, and adds the ism system between like X-ism, A-ism, and V-ism. X-ism is like classic Street Fighter mode where your characters are sort of Street Fighter 2-like in many ways. You get more damage, but you get you don't get access to certain mechanics. The A-ism is the new, like you get an alpha counter, you get three supers, right? And then V-ism is busted mode because it is uh, the custom combo mode. Everyone becomes kind of godlike in V-ism. How does V-ism have an impact on Alpha 3? Well, that's that's a funny question because it kind of does a lot. Uh, Al Alpha 3 is a, a game that always, I felt like I never ever understood it. I learned more about Street Fighter Alpha 3 by playing these versions of the game and sitting down and understanding what all these different isms do because all this ism stuff I found to be really daunting. I never truly sat down and understood it. Instead, I just liked Alpha 2 more. Ultimately, I remember hearing things about the V-ism, which is the custom combo mode, just breaking the game. And even from a competitive standpoint, it sets this like weird ire amongst the community where a lot of people like Alpha 2 more because there's quite a few corner infinites and stuff in Street Fighter Alpha 3. I think almost every character gets them, but weirdly enough has to be in like the right side of the corner from what I understand. And they're really not that bad. It's funny how this sort of permeates throughout all of the Street Fighter Alphas and then later on might have had an impact on the game just competitively because in Japan, Alpha 3 is huge. But in other places, I it feels like Alpha 2 kind of keeps a higher element in the community in some ways while well, Alpha 3 is still is still a massive game. Alpha 3 in Aism is like pure Street Fighter Alpha 3. And in fact, we just watched a big return tournament with Daigo that hosted an Alpha 3 uh, A-ism tournament where, okay, no infinites, like no crouch cancel infinites, none of that crazy stuff. Uh, we're just gonna play pure Street Fighter Alpha. And that's sort of the, the impression where it's like you have to have these caveats, right? Like in Smash Brothers, we're gonna ban this stage, we're gonna ban items, all this stuff. That's kind of the way this is because Alpha 3 in some ways is amazing. And Alpha 3 in other ways is insanely busted, but some people like the insanely busted stuff. Ah! Getting away from that and just talking about Street Fighter Alpha 3 in general, it's incredible. It's like some of the highest effort Capcom ever puts into a fighting game. Even the base roster of the game at the start has a ridiculous amount of characters. And that's just the start of it because Alpha 3 moves forward and it gets plenty of other updates from this point forward. This is the game with like the ultimate modes, right? This is the game where they added so many game modes between all the versions of Alpha 3 and the ones we played was arcade. We played the home console version on Dreamcast. We played the Alpha 3 upper version, which adds several more characters like DJ and Guile and T-Hawk and several others. And, and then obviously the ultimate version of Street Fighter Alpha 3, which is on PSP, Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max. And between all of them, I absolutely love it that dramatic battle is a staple. It's, it's a selectable mode. You get different kinds of dramatic battle. You get this reverse dramatic battle where you can fight to enemy AIs against your own regular self where it's like, oh, well now the, the table is flipped. Damn, I got swords? Holy shit, holy shit. The fuck away from me. Get the fuck away from me. Get here jumped in a kid's park. Fucking fucker, fuck you. Get the fuck away from me. Get the fuck away from me. Got jumped on my way home. Now you're fighting two shitheads and you have to deal through all this stuff. It's it's ridiculously cool, man. Dramatic Battle gets other modes where they eventually allow you to get a CPU partner and you don't have to have a friend piloting the other character. Ken, Ken, help me out here. Ken, I'm just protect you, Ken, you idiot. Ken, wake up, Ken, snap out of it, man. Come on, Ken, I'm your friend. Ken, snap out of it, man. Hey, old buddy. <laughs> it's just like the movie. 
it's just awesome. And the Sega Saturn version is a genuine miracle port, right? Like what's going on in the Saturn version blows my mind and how good it runs and everything that's available in it. It quite literally comes out after Street Fighter Alpha 3 even comes out on Dreamcast. The Saturn mystically gets a port later on that requires a four meg cartridge. And outside of the PSP version is probably the best one. But funny enough, uh, Street Fighter Alpha 3 Upper would not be the one that's mostly played. Alpha 3 Upper is the one that has all the extra characters, right? Adds weird modes like Psycho mode and stuff like that. And that's like a goofy Dan mode for some reason where you get less things. It's like a challenge mode in some way. Can't cancel into special moves because of Psycho mode. Death by a million normals, no combos. But the Crouch Cancel Infinites that would permeate competitive Street Fighter Alpha 3 all over the place is removed. And a lot of people don't like it, funny enough. This is the problem when it comes to busted fighting games is that people grow into the busted elements of them. So even if that stuff is making people happy, a lot of people casually love Street Fighter Alpha 3 Upper and the later versions, but the majority of folks don't play them for a longer periods of time. And people kind of stick with base vanilla Street Fighter Alpha 3 because people like the ridiculous expression and nutty combos and all this kind of stuff. You get used to the busted shit. So even though Capcom goes out of their way to rebalance a lot of the game and fix these issues with Alpha 3 Upper, uh, the previous ones are just played more. But it, it doesn't matter because what is the most appealing thing of Street Fighter Alpha 3 outside of those competitive elements? And it's single player content. It has an astronomical amount of single player content this is where we get the inspiration of Street Fighter 6 with the World Tour mode. And I didn't know this before today, but World Tour is uh, kind of not what I was expecting. Dreamcast and PSP share a, a similar World Tour. And all it kind of is, is just a larger variety arcade mode. You know, it, and I was like, I don't, mm, this does not really feel like what I thought World Tour was. And funny enough, as we're going through it, you get some modifiers, you get some stats things and things that can actually change what you do. You can level up your isms, which is great. Overall level up an individual character and what their ability is. But to me, arcade mode just felt like, oh, this is kind of like arcade mode, but just a little bit more. Uh, it, it, instead, you just have like a large scale visual of your map and you can choose what to fight. I didn't know that World Tour is significant better and more interesting on the Sega Saturn version and the PlayStation 1 version. And we got to play the Saturn version through and through. We did everything that I think you can do in world tour mode and did a full run on the Saturn version, which I might just post on the channel just to show you what it's like. But this one's genuinely interesting because you unlock more stuff. The choices you make in battle and where you go in battle are much more varied and interesting. And how you acclimate a character between more power, more defense is, it does really change things. We play with a crazy version of Akuma throughout the entire thing, found a bunch of cheap AI stuff to do. Ah! I can do that too, shithead. Oh, no! Okay, he can't be punished. Cool. Like, cool, I mean, that fucking sucks. About this time, shithead. You met, you chose wrong. And uh, yeah, I genuinely enjoyed it. It took like a couple of hours to, to, to get through, but figuring out how to make your own custom character, you can give them special to super cancels. You can give yourself no chip damage. You can give yourself recovering meter. You can give the isms that do not use custom combos, custom combos. There's a lot of fun combinations that are in here. And already it was engaging me significantly more than what we were messing around in the Dreamcast version. I think, uh, the premium way to play a proper versus Street Fighter Alpha 3 is, is likely the Saturn version, funny enough, but unfortunately it's one of the most insanely expensive Saturn games there is and only came out in Japan. So that leaves the eventual PSP version. Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max is the ultimate Street Fighter Alpha 3. Just looking at the main menu and the modes is mind blowing everything they stuck into this game. And they also chose to stick in this thing called variable battle, which is no shit a tag mode. You press like light kick and medium punch. You pick two characters and it turns Alpha 3 into a tag team game. 
I didn't even realize it was there. Like, what the hell? Not only that, they bring in several character sprites that were unused from games before. CVS2 had been out for quite some time, and brand new characters that were in CVS2 were added to Alpha 3 Max, along with a brand new character, which is Ingrid. We don't need to say much more about her other than the fact that she's an Athena clone. She's animated amazingly, but I just don't like her. But other characters like Eagle coming back, he was a CVS2 sprite, Yoon coming back, who was ported to CVS2, and Maki, a Final Fight character finally coming back from like Final Fight 2 was also put into CVS2 and they're all they're all back. They're all here and they're all playable and they got wild stuff and they look completely different. <laughs> Granted, Street Fighter Alpha has a very unique visual style and I feel like none of these characters, Ingrid included, look like they belong next to the other characters, right? It feels like we're just we're just in a CVS2 situation here. We're just going to throw all these Capcom things into one game, screw it. That's kind of visually all over the place, but it's fun. You know, and once again, adds four more playable characters to Street Fighter Alpha 3. And oh my God, the character select screen is now insane. But with all the wonderful elements that the PSP version has and all the modes and everything, it has a couple of big problems. World Tour mode is the Dreamcast version. So it is the less interesting, less engaging version of World Tour. And I don't know why they did that because the PS1 version is like the Saturn version. It's really good. Also, you technically can't fight other people in this version. This is a fighting game where the only way you're going to be able to fight another human being is through PSP Wi-Fi ad hoc. So you need to find another human in the same room as you that has a PSP which is weird. There is ways to circumvent this and the emulation and how most of us play it now. But yeah, this was this was a big issue with a lot of multiplayer games on the PSP because so much of it was designed on people being on trains in Japan. So you're just gonna assume that people are, are on the train that you are in Japan and to be able to fight people in it. Oh, cool, right? Monster Hunter style. But it's a problem because I would love to play Alpha 3 Max with some friends. And I'm like, yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna fire up this, uh, this PSP thing and just stick in a couple of cables into our computer. Oh, wait, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> oh, God, we'd have to figure out some crazy mod for Alpha 3 Max to get this figured out. Fortunately, it has some of the most single player content in a fighting game ever. It has so much stuff in it that it now becomes, once again, the quintessential single player Capcom fighting game, much less fighting game in general. And the saddest part about Street Fighter Alpha 3 Max is that this was the version that so many people have been waiting to come back in some way. People want Alpha 3 back in some way with all of the fully featured versions of the PSP version and to actually play versus mode, that'd be amazing, but it's still locked to the PSP. The best you can do is play an emulation of it and give it a shot. But even playing somebody else in this version of the game is very difficult and you have to really cut some corners and do some crazy shit to make it happen. Oh God, we're not even done. Oh, my ass forgot about Street Fighter Alpha Anthology. Holy hell because we eventually get a collection of all of these alpha games on PlayStation 2, and it has other games like Pocket Fighter, which had not come out yet, which was pretty nice. But Alpha Anthology is a port of uh, all Street Fighter Alpha 1, the two different versions of Alpha 2, as well as uh, one version of Alpha 3, technically, and Alpha 3 Upper. I think it's technically two. It also includes some nutty ass mode that's unlockable in the game called Hyper Street Fighter Alpha. And this is the fucking kitchen sink of mechanics, modes, and selectable options in a Street Fighter game. I thought the dip switch settings in the 15th anniversary collection was crazy in, in Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Buddy, this shit is insane. You get these uh, extra modes and isms per character that turn your character into like a Marvel versus Capcom character that give every character a Darkstalker style mode. They give characters Street Fighter 3 modes where no shit, you get parries in Street Fighter Alpha games. What the hell? I sat and trained for a little while just to like parry things and figure out the timing. Oh, what the dumb hell, dude? It's it's insane. Absolutely insane the amount of stuff they crammed in here. The only problem is there's no arcade mode. <laughs> it's just a versus mode. You only get versus mode 
in this entire Hyper Street Fighter Alpha. So even if you want to play like single player, there's really not much. It's weird how that happens, right? Between this series, you get so much content and then not enough at times. It makes me realize Street Fighter Alpha was probably one of the most experimental Capcom fighting game series of all of them. They, they were really trying different things with this game. And between all three different versions being vastly different from one another, Alpha 3 ends up just being this crazy myriad test bed of all this insanely other shit that is that is available and in their heads and they can just try stuff. It is crazy how many times Alpha 3 gets added and adjusted and put onto other systems. It's pretty much the Street Fighter 2 Turbo of the modern Capcom fighting game age, which is pretty much past the mid 90s at this point. And between its visual styling, I think there's a lot to love about the Street Fighter Alpha series. And there's just so much to it. <laughs> it's it's kind of hard. You, you, you get to a point once again where Alpha 3 gets all these versions and uppers and Saturn ports and PlayStation ports and PSP ports. And it's like, buddy, where the hell are we? Which version is this? What, can I even do this today? Um, am I in the right one for reverse dramatic battle? It can be sort of hard to, to figure that out, but ultimately, PSP version, one of the greatest Capcom fighting games slash one of the greatest fighting games for single player content there is. The uh, Saturn version, the most feature rich that also has versus modes, right? And uh, and does give you a huge amount of options, but is still really expensive. And then we get, in my opinion, one of the uh, best Street Fighter games period, which is Street Fighter Alpha 2. And I realized after learning more about Alpha 3 and figuring out how to play it a bit more, that I still like Alpha 2. That for some reason, Street Fighter Alpha 2 uh, still feels a little bit better and something about the snappiness and just the presentation of that game just sits with me in a way that is different than almost any other Street Fighter. And I remember liking Alpha 2 even more than the original SF2 before I, you know, get introduced to another little series, which is Street Fighter 3. And funny enough, this would be the point where Capcom really tries to change shit. They get insanely experimental with the Street Fighter 3 series, potentially create one of the greatest fighting games of all time, but not before they would screw up the Street Fighter franchise so bad that we would not see it directly come back for almost a decade. And that's Street Fighter 3 New Generation. And oh man, is this a weird ass game.